So the Jaden Rashada situation is genuinely one of the most fascinating recruiting battles we've seen during the entirety of the 2023 recruiting process. And today, we need to talk about how this already intriguing battle could be set to get a lot more interesting. Because per several reports, Jaden Rashada may be going to visit the Colorado Buffaloes and Coach Prime, something we've got to break down. But we also need to talk about several other institutions in connection and break down the entirety of the situation before we can, as always. Y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Would you be surprised if Coach Prime landed Jaden Rashada? And let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed this content, be sure to like and comment down below as those interactions are massive to content creators such as myself. And we're on a push to 20,000 subscribers. I'd love nothing more than to have you a part of this unbelievable community. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And per Adam Gurney of Rivals, Jaden Rashada may have gone and visited Colorado and Coach Prime, and if this is true, that's going to be a huge win for the Buffaloes. And before we can really talk about what a visit from Jaden Rashada would mean for Colorado, we also have to talk about the fact that per a report from On3, Jaden Rashada is also set to visit Kenny Dillingham and the Arizona State Sun Devils. And we've talked on the channel about some of the moves Arizona State has made, bringing in samples, bringing in Brian Carrington. Love those two hires. I'm really intrigued to see what Dillingham is able to do with Arizona State, especially coming from the chaos that that team just came from. Jaden Daniels, for instance, is a player who transferred from Arizona State, and I was very excited to see his journey going from Arizona State to LSU because it was hard for me to gauge where he was as a player. I don't think it's easy being a college football player. I know it's not, but it is inherently more difficult being a college football player when you are surrounded by so much chaos, and that's exactly what we saw at Arizona State. So really interested to see what Kenny Dillingham and company are able to do there. Love some of the moves he's made. It's great for the program that they're already getting Jaden Rashada in for a visit. A lot of the same things we're going to talk about with Jaden Rashada in Colorado absolutely apply to Kenny Dillingham. If you're an Arizona State fan, you have to love that your coach who has not been there long is getting in a blue chip guy, depending on where you look, a five-star quarterback, but per everywhere, a blue chip four-star, pretty much a top 10 quarterback to come and visit your institution. You have to love that. But for Colorado, even getting Jaden Rashada in to hear the pitch is already a massive win, though one I'm not inherently surprised about. And let's start there. Why am I not surprised if this is true? Well, it's because Coach Prime moves the needle. We've talked about this time and time again, and at what point are we going to all admit, hey, Coach Prime is legit on this recruiting trail? It took Travis Hunter before people really started taking him serious. Then it's Kermani McLean. He's gotten Dylan Edwards. He has gotten some massive recruiting wins. So I'm not surprised if the reports are true that Jaden Rashada is interested and wants to hear the pitch. It makes complete sense to me. But it is still a massive win if you're Colorado. And I have seen people ask the question, well, why would Jaden Rashada be interested in going to Colorado? In theory, he would have to sit. But I don't think that's as a unique of a situation as people try and claim. Because if we look at this current recruiting class, five-star quarterback Malachi Nelson, who's committed to USC, will in theory have to sit behind Caleb Williams for a year. If we look at Arch Manning, in theory, he'll have to sit behind Quinn Ewers for a year. Bryce Young, even. Heisman Trophy winning quarterback sat behind Mac Jones for a year. So quarterbacks coming into college, it's not uncommon at all that they sit their freshman year. In fact, in a lot of instances, that can be very powerful and very positive. You can sit your freshman year. If you want to redshirt, you can, and you get to learn without as much pressure on you. And that can be an incredibly powerful growing tool for these young quarterbacks to come in, learn, learn not only from their quarterback coach, from their offensive coordinator, but from the guy in front of them, the guy who's actually taking the live reps. I think that can be very profoundly positive, something I'm really interested in seeing. But I do not personally believe that Colorado already having a quarterback they feel very comfortable about would dissuade Jaden Rashada from committing there. Because we've seen time and time again, a lot of these high school guys, they're perfectly fine with coming into a situation if they get to sit a year, if they can grow, and if they feel like they will learn during the course of that year it can be very powerful to their growth. One thing we need to understand, though, is that Colorado is not the only team involved in this recruiting battle, far from it. Institutions such as Arizona State and even TCU and Cal are being mentioned in connection to the five-star signal caller. And Jaden Rashada is a quarterback that multiple institutions in the nation are going to want. Now, if you're wondering why I consider this to be the most interesting recruiting battle we've seen during the entirety of the 2023 process, well, we'll quickly run through this. Jaden Rashada is an individual who was committed 
traded to Miami, flipped from Miami to Florida, and then after he'd signed his letter of intent, news breaks that there might be some discontent between his camp and the Florida Gators NIL collective. Now, per The Athletic, they've reported that there was a $13 million NIL agreement between the Florida Gators collective and the Rashada family that the collective wanted to back out of after Rashada had already signed his letter of intent. And I don't know what the number is. I don't know if that $13 million is accurate, but it's all I have to go off of. Personally, that seems like a whole lot of money to pay somebody that's never taken a snap in college football. So that would be a wild figure if that's accurate. But nonetheless, that's all we have to go off of. What I do know is this. If it's $1 million, if it's $2 million, if it's $100,000, the amount of money isn't as important as the fact of if this is true, the Florida Gators NIL collective made an agreement, even if it was verbal, and then backed out of that agreement after the player had already signed their letter of intent. That's not what you want attached to your NIL collectives. You do not want to be the collective that gives problems to the athletes and the athletes' families, because now it's out on Front Street. People see this. So this is something we've got to watch. We have to watch how this entire process is handled, both from the Rashada side, from the Florida side, because this could be foundational to the future of NIL. And that's why I say this is so important, because now we actually have an issue of a collective and a recruit not agreeing on some of the agreements they had previously made. So this is why we need to keep up with this situation, and that's exactly why I consider it the most interesting recruiting battle of the 2023 recruiting cycle. For those of you that have been around the channel for an extended period of time, you've heard my spiels on NIL. I think NIL is something that's long overdue, but I think we also need to implement it right. We need to make sure we don't have bad faith actors in the space looking to take advantage of these athletes and their families. We need to make sure that there are protections for the athletes, and we need to make sure that these agreements are going to be on the up and up so that situations like this don't happen. So I'm super interested in seeing how all of this comes together. But one thing we do know is that if it's true that Jaden Rashada visited Colorado, that in and of itself is a big win for Coach Prime. And if they can get the win for Jaden Rashada, well, that would be monumental. If we look nationally for 24-7 sports themselves, not the composite, Jaden Rashada comes in as the number 29 overall prospect in the nation, regardless of position. He comes in as the number six quarterback and the number six player in the state of California. Now, if we look at the 24-7 sports composite, he comes in as the number 59 player in the nation, the number seven quarterback, and the number six player in the state of California. So either way, he is a top 100 prospect in the nation regardless of position and a top 10 quarterback in a quarterback class that is absolutely loaded we've talked about this before if you'd like i'll link the video down below but this quarterback class is head spinning how much talent is in it so where do you think Jaden rashada goes do you believe that coach prime in colorado can get this win if not where are you interested in seeing the very talented quarterback play his collegiate ball hop down to the comments let me know what you're thinking that's it see you